1885, the Detroit Museum of Art opened in a brand new purpose-built building on Jefferson Avenue. In 1919, we changed our name from the Detroit Museum of Art to the Detroit Institute of Arts. In 1927, we moved to our current address. And in the late 60s and early 70s, we added the North and South Wings. As the building was growing, so was the collection. And what started with a group of 70 works of art from James Scripps, over the years, through great collectors and specialists, this collection has grown into one of the finest in the world. So today, in 2010, we celebrate 125 years of the Art Museum in Detroit. And to celebrate those 125 years, my curatorial colleagues and I have chosen 125 works. And today, you're going to see a selection, some highlights of that 125. Van Gogh painted this self-portrait in 1887 and when he painted it, he had only been painting for seven years. And it's, it's, it's extraordinary to think of the distance that he came in those seven years. In 1880, he was barely better than an, any kind of amateur painter. With this work, he's come to Paris, he's absorbed Impressionism, he's Im absorbed aspects of post-Impressionism like pointillism, and he's moving on to be the recognizable late Van Gogh that, that we all know. Now, this particular picture was acquired by William Valentina, the first director of the Detroit Institute of Arts. And it was in 1922. And can you imagine presenting this kind of work of art in the 1920s to a board of trustees in the Midwest? Well, there were a couple of people on the board back then who were extremely far-sighted. One of them was Ralph Harmon Booth, and the other one was the very young Edsel Ford. But this is the first Van Gogh to enter a US museum. And it's interesting because Valentina was a scholar of Rembrandt, Dutch art, but he loved contemporary art. And one of the reasons he loved contemporary art was because he was friends with some of the German expressionists. And it was the German expressionists who came out of Van Gogh. When you look at this wonderful portrait here, you can see there are aspects of pointillism, impressionism, but there's also a kind of a twist to the hat, that's the way it's talking. And then this, this face comes forward in an odd way that